What makes a villain weak? Sometimes it's their own ego, sometimes it's their elaborate schemes, and other times it's their own power set? Welcome back Nerd Squad, it's me Amanda McKnight aka Vampex13 and this is the top 10 dumbest villain weaknesses. What weakness do you think is the most goofy? Number 10, his own hubris. In the 2000 Spider-Man films we saw Norman Osborn meet his end in the stupidest of ways. For a villain that even in the film franchise is supposed to be a genius and a master manipulator. This was honestly, I gotta be real with you, a pretty dumb move. He and Spider-Man are having a standoff and he comes up with the brilliant idea mid-fight to finish off Spider-Man by impaling him with his glider. Norman please. You would think this would be a brilliant plan except for the part where it's well, not. You see, the problem is that Green Goblin is just behind Spider-Man, meaning that the glider would impale him too. This becomes more of an issue when he goes for it and Spider-Man, possessing, you know, spidey sense and being pretty quick to react to an attack, just jumps out of the way, leaving Green Goblin in the way of his own glider and resulting in him impaling himself and dying. Nice one, Norman. I mean, you can't even blame Spider-Man for that one. That's just, you did that to yourself. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, be sure to show us you love us, feed that algorithm by clicking that like button. Number 9, Always Wins. Iska isn't necessarily a villain in the comics, but she has leaned that way in some more recent stories in the last few years. Initially, she was on the side of Araka, which while not inherently bad, were fighting against the mutants of Krakoa of Earth and also were allied with the demons of Amenth. So yeah. She also turned her back on her own people when Uranus came to attack Mars, which became the new home of the Iraqi mutants known as Planet Araco. And this apparently wasn't the first time that she'd done something like that. The interesting thing about Iska, like some others on our list, is that her powers are in fact her own weakness at times, as long as someone is smart enough to know how to best use them against her. That is what we see in her fight against the Fisher King. You see, Iska always has to win, whether it's in a bet, a fight, or simply a debate of wills. In this case, the Fisher King challenged her to a battle of understanding loss, and since she has to win, this caused caused Iska to feel the loss of all that her powers had caused her to give up with her victories, forcing her to feel emotionally defeated and thereby remove herself from the Great Ring of Araco, ultimately giving the Fisher King what he wanted and so in that way he beat her at his own game. Number 8, Overcomplicated Plans While Lex Luthor might be the most brilliant Superman villain in the comics, his film adaptation leave much to be desired and it is for this reason that he made our cut. Don't believe me? Well you might need to rewatch Batman. Batman v Superman, which paints him as the villain behind the showdown between the two heroes who are usually portrayed as being BFFs, normally in the main continuity at least of the comics, instead of making the president the one who issues the order to make them fight and more revolve around their different ideologies of Batman sort of going a little crazy in his old age, which is what we got in the comics and it makes uh, I would say uh, some more sense. Lex's plot here is so intricate and so haphazardly built on hoping that people will make the move that he anticipates. I mean, you could argue that Lex is just that good at reading and manipulating people, but I'd wager that it's more likely that he's just honestly lucky here. If he was really a genius, he probably would have made the plan, I don't know, more direct. Less room for things to go wrong. Just kidnap Martha and make them fight already. And let's not forget that Lex has no real motivation for this plan either. At the very least, not Batman's involvement. And let's not forget in the 2000s when all Lex Luthor's plans just revolved around real estate. That was also a weird time. Number 7, Mirrors. Mirror Master is actually a pretty powerful villain for being one of the more gimmicky Flash villains we have. He often either comes equipped with his own mirror gun or powers related to the mirror dimension. These powers over the years have had a variety of different effects. He can disguise himself, look into past events that mirrors have witnessed, trap people in mirrors, and even move through mirrors at times, depending on the version of the character and the story that we're talking about. But while this has been a power set for him, it's also been used against him as a weakness. In modern comics, Mirror Master ended up getting his weapon blended with his genes, which gave him mirror-based superpowers. Honestly, sounds pretty great. Unfortunately, it wasn't a good thing at first, as he ended up just trapped in the mirror dimension.
dimension with no possible way out. At least initially that's what happened. So in that case, his own power kind of became his own weakness. Number 6. Bad Planning Dr. Doom aka Victor Von Doom has had a slew of great plans to be fair, but he has also had a slew of, well honestly, terrible ones. One particularly ridiculous plan that proves just how dumb the usual genius level intellect supervillain can be involved him swapping bodies with Daredevil. This plan could have been great, except it mostly just involves Dr. Doom messing with Daredevil, including a part involving a room that is giant sized set up as a test to prove that Daredevil is worthy of the planned body swap. Doom's plan seems to be to use Daredevil's connection to the Fantastic Four to do something. Defeat them, I guess? I would think. We never really get there. Daredevil handily defeats Doom while in his body by threatening to start a war between Latveria and China. Doom knows this would not end well and agrees to basically swap back. Oh, and apparently Dr. Doom also doesn't seem to notice that Daredevil is blind even when he's in his body. So I guess because he has his superpowers, I don't know. Number 5. Self-imposed restrictions So Mr. Mixie is just honestly such a weird character in general. I mean he's an imp from the fifth dimension who basically has limitless power, but mostly uses said powers to just taunt and tease superheroes that honestly he kinda admires. He's less a villain and more just like an over enthusiastic, overpowered fanboy. When you consider this, his weakness actually kinda makes sense since you know, he is so ridiculous of a character. But on the other hand, when you consider how insanely powerful Mr. Mixie is, his weakness seems pretty insanely easy to exploit. He really only has one weakness, which is if you get him to say or spell his name, Mr. Mixie is Pitalik backwards, then he will be forced to leave Earth for 90 days minimum, and all of the effects of his magic will immediately fade. Even stranger is the fact that Mr. Mixie actually chose this as his own weakness, as he is the one who apparently limits his own powers. So he was like, I gotta choose a, a limit. I'm gonna go with this one. It's very strange, specific, and kind of weird. Number four, not actually the smartest. Ozymandias, aka Adrian Veidt's villainous scheme to kill millions in order to obtain world peace, honestly seems brilliant on paper. His fellow heroes never saw it coming, and he only reveals his plot after it had already taken place, being sure to cover his tracks as he went. He applauds himself and thinks he is the smartest man in the world. Even the rest of the Watchmen decide they may as well join him, except Rorschach. As such, Ozymandias underestimates his potential opponents, and Rorschach actually gets the better of him, despite Manhattan killing him. Beforehand, he was smart enough to send his journal with his findings surrounding Adrian's plans to the news. They decided to publish the information and expose Veidt for the villain he is, undoing everything he set out to accomplish and sending him into hiding. So while he may claim to be the smartest man on earth, Rorschach still seems to somehow have outsmarted him. Number 3. Illusions That Aren't Solid Mastermind can create powerful illusions, ones that feel, smell, sound, taste, and look completely real. For example, if he creates a wall, it will feel like a wall. But if you can overcome how convincing the illusion seems mentally if you just decide to run through that wall, I mean it isn't actually there, so it's not a solid construct. And his illusions can only exist as long as you actually believe them to be true. They require you to believe, so once you shatter one of his illusions, basically all the others will just come tumbling down after. Jason Wingard also has to concentrate for you to see his illusions, so many people have taken him out in a battle simply by distracting him momentarily. He also can't control who sees them and who doesn't. If he creates a giant butterfly in a room, all who are in the room with it will see it, anyone who has it within their line of sight, which can sometimes work at a disadvantage for him. Number 2. Showboating Granted, Magneto isn't intended to really be a villain in this storyline, but either way, he still acts pretty dumb and does some questionable things. This story of course comes to us not from the comics, but from Days of Future Past, the X-Men movie where we see Wolverine go back in time to try to prevent the post-apocalyptic events of the future, which is really his past. Anyways, time travel is confusing. Magneto is trying to help prevent this future as well and aims to kill Mystique in order to do so before an event can take place where she is caught on camera and basically terrifies all of humankind, causing the huge war between humans and mutants which leads us of course to the future, which is like I said Wolverine's past in his mind. When this fails, Magneto decides to take control of Trask's sentinels and have them kill the president. Not a terrible idea, until he decides to fly in and drop a stadium on the lawn of the White House and confess 
publicly on television that he, a mutant, was responsible for all of this destruction. But wasn't the whole point of you trying to do this initial plan to avoid what you just did? Magneto, you know, please. Number one, her own suit. Asbestos Lady's own suit is made out of fireproof material, but that material is, well, asbestos. This is why Asbestos Lady would later on actually die, because of her own suit, which was also said to give her cancer. Of course, Asbestos Lady was a product of her time, which is why her suit was made out of this material, which back then we did actually know was that dangerous so sadly she, her weakness is kind of just a product of the time period that's about it until next time you stay nerdy YouTube